Welcome to Happy Valley, home of the Penn State Nittany Lions and one of the most passionate fan bases in all of college football. This matchup today, part of the lifeblood of the sport, a rivalry game where the results will be remembered for a lifetime. As we'll see a squad from the ACC, the Pittsburgh Panthers, taking on the seventh ranked team in the land, the Penn State Nittany Lions. For EA Sports College Football, I'm Reese Davis, joined here in the booth by David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. And guys, let's get this thing started. The Nittany Lions will kick it away to start us off. And he takes this from inside the five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. So Pittsburgh's offense takes the field for the first time today. And the adrenaline is pumping on overdrive in games like this, guys. And it's crucial to get your emotions under control. No doubt. In rivalry games, you've got to limit the mental errors and you've got to limit the penalties because those will kill you, Bob. And you've got to come out under control. It means so much. We know that the fans are all talking about it, but it's just football. After getting knocked back to open this drive, it's second and 12. But jet sweep pass. Makes it past the marker. Works his way to the 41, and that is plenty to give him a first down. And I love right out of the gate, this offense is going to be creative, and they're going to try to get their best players the football out in the open field. You saw it right there. Pitt pushing the pace. It'll be a draw. And I think they'll give him two on that one, second and eight coming up. The biggest lie college football coaches tell is nameless, faceless opponent. David, game like this, you know their name and you know their face. You know them well, and it does mean just a little bit more because it's bragging rights. Like, the rivalries matter so much. All throughout the year, all the fans talking about this game in particular, that's why it means more, and that's why these players will be jacked out of their minds. And there's an example of what happens when the quarterback doesn't have a chance to set his feet. The pressure just forced him to have to work off schedule a little bit. And I think because of that, he wasn't able to be as accurate as he wanted to be. This crowd, full throat, splitting the eardrums and letting him know it's going to be a long day. Oh, they really could have used that catch. Their physical pass defense, it brings up a fourth down. Just got to wonder, too, guys, if the crowd didn't impact the offense. They're playing on the road on the first third down of this football game. Incomplete. The idea here, I think, just punt it away and see if you can regroup because this environment is hostile. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. Not going to risk a return here. He'll make the fair catch. So Penn State's offense will have its first possession of the game. As we take a look at our impact players for this one, what are you looking for, Jesse, for a guy to make an impact? Well, these are simply put the leaders of this football team, and generally games go how these guys play. If they make plays, then they've got a shot to win this one. No doubt, they got to show up. These are the team leaders. These guys have to play well if they're going to win the football game. They go with the option, quarterback keeps it himself, and look, we've seen this guy on tape, guys, break these tackles and take it the distance. This offense should keep dialing up these option plays. Don't let that short gain by the QB prevent you from running this scheme in your playbook. Solid gain to get him out close to the 20, pick up a five to the 19. They have relished this tight victory since the last time these two got together, Paula. Nah, it's just winning is beautiful. And when you beat your rival and you get those bragging rights, Palmer, it is a glorious thing for a whole year and sometimes longer. 
Well, that's the best thing about rivalry games like this. For the winning team, whoever pulls this one out here today, their fans are going to be bragging about this one for a long time. They get him on the ground, but not before he gets enough for the first down. Really nice job there by the quarterback, understanding that it's zone coverage on third down. You're going to have to find someone working into a soft spot, get the ball out of your hands quickly, make an accurate throw, and pick up the first. Well done. The give to the back. And the defense holds firm. No pickup at all on that play. Linebackers in today's football, obviously, guys have gotten smaller. they got to play in space more, cover fast guys out on the perimeter. But how about this linebacker coming downhill and making a physical tackle in the hole? Got stuffed on first down. It's second and ten. Wants to throw. It's Aller. Using the quick game. Creates a little room. And they'll finally bring him down after he rips off a huge play. How nice is it as a quarterback when you don't have to throw post routes to get great stats? No, I can just throw it quickly to one of the fastest players in the entire nation and let him burn this defense. The Nittany Lions are in the hurry up. Takes the handoff. It's Singleton. And they'll stop him just short of the first down, just inches away from moving the sticks. Man, when I can run the football like that on first down and create second and inches and stay way ahead of the sticks and, and be in a position now where I can throw the football or run, I will have a lot of success on the offensive side of the football. Right back to the well. Fights off a defender. And that first defender was just waving at him after that sweet move. He picked up the first down. The whole Penn State legacy is built on toughness, getting it done on the ground, and they pick up a first down. And you got to start there with the physicality, the ground game, getting that going. That's kind of a Northeast thing, right? Being tough, being physical, bringing that lunch pail. Didn't get much done on that run. He'll fight his way out and maybe, maybe pick up a yard. Well, you love to see that from the defense, right? It's like bend, don't break. They've given up a bunch of plays on this drive, but now that they're getting down close to field goal range, you're seeing them start to stiffen up. Yeah, and plays don't matter anymore. Yards don't matter. All that matters with these defenses nowadays is points and limiting them. And he's able to find a little bit of running room before they get him down. Draws are such a smart way to take advantage of fast defensive linemen that want to get upfield and get after the quarterback. It keeps them honest, makes them realize they got to play the run, too. Great play call. This will be the ninth play of the drive coming up. It's a third and two. Looking to throw for it. Quickly complete. They've got it just outside the red zone. They'll move the chains. It's at the 21. That's tough on the defense there. Third down, you're in zone coverage. Everybody's watching the quarterback, and you're trying to make a break on the ball, but he just got it out of his hands too quickly, and the throw was too accurate. Really nothing you can do there, and it's now a fresh set of downs. And the Nittany Lions come to the line with a new set of downs. Release to the back. And the physical play there forces the incompletion on first down. You know, it's difficult for QBs sometimes when you're throwing to your running backs because they're not receivers. You really got to be perfect with the ball placement. You got to make that a catchable throw. A little bit too tough for the RB on that one. And after the incompletion on first down, this offense looking at second down. Fast motion from the offense. To the air. It's Aller. And that's going to be incomplete. A lot of contact on the play, but no flags. It'll be third down. Well, give the defense credit, because they're forcing this quarterback to throw into very small windows under duress. This drive was clicking along, but after a couple of misfires, threatening to stall out on third and ten. From the gun, wants to pass. Pressure in his face, and he lets it fly. And trying to put points on the board on third down. Now they're staring at fourth down. 
I'll tell you what, I don't know if the offense was expecting man coverage that time. Third and long in field goal range, you're expecting it to be zone. Instead, they lock them up man-to-man, -man, everybody on an island, and everybody won. They get the incompletion now setting up fourth. Now on fourth down, they'll settle for a field goal try. Never a doubt. Right down the middle. And with that, they break the seal on the scoring. It's 3-0. This is a team that really prides themselves on starting fast. We've seen that before, and here they are playing at home today. Nice job on the opening drive. Lots of poise, good emotion. They don't get the touchdown they would have liked, but they kick a nice field goal. They've got the lead. Head coach has to be happy with it. They were able to get a field goal on board, and now they'll kick it away. He'll start the return inside his five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. The Pittsburgh offense is back on the field. That last drive fizzled out, Jesse. They had to punt it. Yeah, they did. And David, they're just going to have to do a better job this time around erasing the mental mistakes. And just trying to solve the defensive riddle, understanding what they're trying to do to you and attack them. It's so important this offense is able to get this guy the ball in space, especially on the perimeter of the field. And I love that last play call because he's able to get outside and use his speed. To me, that's where this guy is most dangerous. Quick pass on the jet motion. Finding a way to put that foot in the ground and get it up to the 37-yard line. Well, and on these little push passes, timing is so important. You're trying to snap it right as he's getting a full head of steam. When he gets the ball, he's hitting the outside. And David, it puts the defense in such a difficult spot. You immediately have to be rotating when you see that motion. So everybody's got to communicate and kind of bump over. That's why offenses love to run. It just it makes the defense communicate and see if you can just get him out of a spot. A strong tackle and wrap up from the junior. Decibels rising as the crowd gets behind this defense on third down. He wants to throw it again. And they can't make the connection. Well, the quarterback and his intended target just simply didn't have the timing there. The ball falls incomplete on third, now setting up fourth down. Pitt will have to boot this one away. Second time today, they've been forced to punt. No return coming. He'll call for the fair catch. Penn State sends the offense back onto the field. They've got the lead here. Last time they settled for a field goal, but David got to find that balance between being aggressive and careful. Man, I think they'll take that. I got the lead, Palmer. I got the football. I got to take care of the football, put a nice drive together, and just get some kind of points on this drive. No doubt. Lots to be happy about right now if you're this team. I think for this one, though, on this drive, it's about finding the one-on-one -on -one matchups that are in your favor and then exploiting them. single back formation and they give it to it. Picks his way ahead, pick up a three and gets it to the 20 yard line. I like feeding my guy. I like getting my running back touches, feeding the ball so he can break some of those big runs, but I'm also okay with these little ones. Set the tone, stay balanced. As they get set to snap at time, winding down here in the quarter. On third and long, he's going to have to throw for it. Couldn't find a man and just had to throw it away to avoid a negative play. The Nittany Lions will try to pin them back with the punt. This will be their first punt of the afternoon. A fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. We've come to the end of the quarter, and it's Penn State on top. One period in the books, and let's take a look at the stats. Heading in the opposite directions now as we crank it up in the second. The Pitt offense back on the field and ready to roll. 
That last drive won't go on the highlight reel after ending in a punt. They'd like to be more productive this time, David. And I think this offense has to be a little bit more balanced. Find a little balance between the run, Jesse, and working in that pass. And I think, too, David, it's just going to take a spark. It just takes one play to get this thing picked up and going. They ran it on first down, now on second. Looking to throw, it's Yarnell. Got his man. And the completion gives him a fresh set of downs and keeps this drive moving. I just love quarterbacks that aren't greedy and that aren't always trying to throw the home run ball, right? Second down, you're in your own end of the field. The guy you want to throw to is not open. Just find the back. He'll go do something positive with it. This guy is a weapon, and you got to find him in the passing game. Moving the running back, trying to get the D to tip its hand. Caught in the backfield. It's Hammond. Good pick up on that play. It'll bring up second and four. Just keep giving them the easy catches until they do something to stop it. Yeah, you're going to dictate to the defense. You're going to make the defense cover them up, and then obviously it leaves the middle of the field a little bit more wide open for receiver for a tight end. So QB keeps making the right decision, getting the ball to running back, and he's making plays. It's a draw. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. You have to find a way to create some hesitation on defense when you're selling the draw play. They just didn't do it well enough there. Yeah, it's got to be the offensive line and the quarterback and the running back. They all have to work together to, to show pass, pass set up front, act like it's a throw for the quarterback, not rushing. The defense clearly not fooled, got in the backfield, got the tackle for a loss. Fires to the wideout. He's got it. Well, look, that wasn't a touchdown, but that was a massive play for this offense. They needed some momentum. They needed to find a rhythm, and what better way than converting on third down? Awesome job by the quarterback getting through his progression. The Panthers are rolling down the field. Running to the left. He has the first and still on his feet. And they'll finally get him down after a terrific pickup. And here we go. If you're an offense, you've got to get that ground game going so you can have some balance, and then you give it to your quarterback, Palmer, and let him make some plays down the field later on. Yeah, exactly. And then coming into this game, this offense knew they were going to have to some way, somehow, at least establish a semblance of a running game for exactly what you just said. You've got to be able to use play-action pass later in this game to get some explosive plays down the field. And it's a play like that that we just saw, which can help them get that going. Man, it's so important when you play QB. i got to know when to put some air on it, and i got to know when to rocket that thing in there. Work in the middle of the field. He knew he needed the rocket. Threw it in there. Great job. Great catch. Going to work on second down in the red zone. And still some ground to cover to pick up that first. Into the house. Touchdown, Panthers. Field shrinks. Tight end grows. Big targets. Big results. <laughs> I've never heard it put that way. But you're dang right. That guy is so big. A lot of times you get a DB matched up on him. He can just post him up. A linebacker, he can run by him. So that's why these tight ends are so dangerous down here in this red zone. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And the extra point makes it 7-3. to three. That touchdown drive covered 61 yards. And they cap things off with a 9-yard touchdown pass. They're just about ready to kick it away. He'll bring it back from inside his five. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. The Nittany Lions going back to work on offense now. Boy, three and out last time, David. They'd like to be more productive this time around. Yeah, in the last drive, nothing really clicked. No rhythm. Got off the field really, really quickly. They need to put something together here, Paul. Yeah, David, bad execution on that last drive. So they got to take a collective breath and start playing like a unit on this drive. After the run, second and medium. Back to throw, it's Aller. 
Quick strike complete. Oh, my. Circle, circle. Spinderella put him in the spin cycle and picked up the first down. And this set of downs gets started from the 33, first and 10. Quarterback on the keeper. And they try the middle of this defense, and that is not happening. Nice job by the defense shutting down all the options, making sure it wasn't easy to read. Nice job going to the quarterback, getting him on the ground. This offense has a second down play. They go to the ground. And he could not get loose on the run. Great job by the defense. Everybody firing off the ball, hitting their guys, holding their gaps, running to the football, nowhere to go. The last two runs went headlong into a brick wall. Now third and ten. Here's the snap, looking to throw. They're setting up the screen. Nice move to keep running. He will step out of bounds, but not before the big pickup and a first down for this offense. And there you go. You see, you don't have to throw bombs to get big plays in the passing game. Just screen it to your running back. As soon as he catches it, he gets upfield. And how about the downfield blocking by these linemen and the wide receivers as they rip off that explosive play? Off the play fake on first down, wants to throw. Caught over the middle. It's Saunders. They are finding soft spots in this defense. He's got it down to the 25. A big game there as they did a tremendous job working the middle of the field. Yeah, and if you're going to complete that throw, Reese, quarterbacks have got to play with anticipation. You've got to get it out of your hands early and give your receiver an opportunity before the defense gets to the ball. The Nittany Lions headed quickly to the line. They'll throw it on first down. He just got rid of that one to save the down. Didn't see anything he liked. After the quarterback and receiver couldn't connect, it's second and ten. Motion from the offense. On the move, it's Aller. Pass rush coming after the quarterback, and they get him at the 32. I think if you're the quarterback moving forward, you need to start thinking about hot routes to your tight ends and to your running backs because of this outside linebacker. He's a guy that has shown the knack to get after the QB. When he comes blitzing, you need to have an outlet throw in your back pocket. This will be the eighth play of the drive, but a great opportunity for the defense to get off the field. On third and long, a check down would be the last resort. Just threw that one away to avoid disaster. Nice job by the defense. They're mixing up their look there. Third and long in field goal range, they go zone coverage. So everybody on the back end has the eye on the quarterback, and they're able to break on the ball, force the incompletion. And on fourth down, they'll try to put three on the board. And this kicker might be feeling it. He made one earlier, now from 49 yards out. Never a doubt for this big-footed guy. 49-yard field goal is good. After putting up the field goal, they're set to kick it away. And no chance at a return here. They'll start this drive at their own 25. The Pittsburgh offense is back on the field. That last drive really productive. David wound up with a touchdown. They'll try to do it again. Yeah, so I don't expect this offense to change too much, Reese. They had a great drive. They got the touchdown. Everything working. I would expect them to keep pushing this ball downhill. And just imagine if they could put another touchdown on the board right here. They could capture so much momentum in this game with back-to-back -back TDs. Dropping back, it's Yarnell. Got his man quickly. 
And that defense doesn't allow a cutback, and they get him out of bounds after a short game. Nice job there. Good timing between the QB and the wide receiver executing that outright. A little bit more to go after that last completion. They'll try to pick it up on second down. Here's the handoff. Discards a man. Picks his way and gets four out to the 27. It's a two-minute warning, and we'll see if the offense can tack a little something extra on their lead before the break. Better find the earplugs. Here comes the noise, backing this defense on third down. From the gun, wants to pass. Makes the catch. It's Lee. And he'll step across the sidelines after making a good gain on that one. Look, you want to make the quarterback feel you. You want to get pressure in his face. That was so close, but just a tad late. He's looking to throw it. Gets it out fast. Well, it's a great job by the receiver fighting back across the DB there to get to the inside, locate the ball, and catch the slant. Second down coming up. He's looking to throw. And he really needed to hold on to that one, but it was not loose, and third down is coming. The big tight end tries to make a catch, and you can tell it extends for the ball, but great job by the defender getting in there, making the hit, dislodging the football out at the same time as he's going to catch it, and the big tight end couldn't hold on to it. Back to throw. It's Yarnell. They're bringing heat. They're working that left side. He gets the job done on third down. They move the chains. It's at the 37. Third and short, and I guess the only thing they really took out of play in the shotgun was the quarterback sneak. Yeah, and that's kind of what I like to do, Reese. I mean, third and inches, I, I want to run the quarterback sneak, run the football, but this team fully comfortable throwing the football, and you see why. Easy pitch, easy catch, first down. And the defense gets home and makes a play at the 37-yard line. And it just doesn't get more dominant than that. One-on-one, -on -one, me versus you, and there's nothing you can do about it, David. I know that's something you know a lot about based on your time. Richard. Man, fly off the edge, beat the man as quick as you can. There's so many things that have to go right for you to get a sack. The ball has to be coming out a little bit later. But you know what? When you win that fast and that clean off the line of scrimmage, that is how it's done at the highest level for that defensive end. Unloads to the wideout. Right on the money to the outside. He dragged the toe. And how about the ball placement? Only the receiver could get it. They just can't seem to cover this guy. He keeps getting open, even when he's running out of space on the sideline. Yeah, running out. Now, we'll hang on here. The coach has called a timeout. He wants the officials to take another look. Thinks he's got a good shot at getting this one overturned. He spun that wheel of fortune by challenging the call, and it does not go his way, and he loses the timeout. Pitt coming to the line after getting another first down. He's going to pass. Throws to the wideout. He's got it. And he'll go out of bounds just short of the goal line, and they've got it right on the doorstep. And, guys, how many first downs is that? Just on this drive alone? I mean, this defense allows one or two more drives like this, and they're going to be gassed by the third quarter. And the Panthers trying to cash it in on first and goal. To the air. It's Yarnell. Unleashes to the end zone. And it's caught. Touchdown, Pitt. And I just love the execution by this offense. Late in the half, man, you want to take the lead. You want to get that momentum on your side, and they do it. They finish it with the passing game. And I'll tell you what, keep that passing game up. You can keep this lead, keep the momentum, and keep putting up numbers. Getting set for the point after.
And the PAT makes it 14-6. So that's a 59-yard touchdown drive. And they finish it up with a three-yard scoring toss. So they got the touchdown, and as they kick off, really important for the defense to shut them down here. Here's the return from inside his tent. And the return man reaches the end of the line, and down he goes. Penn State sends the offense back onto the field. This late in the half, you're behind. You'd love to create something before the break to build momentum, Jesse. But you've also had some miscues on offense, a big part of why you're losing the game right now. I'd take it into halftime, make my adjustments, and come out ready in the second half. Yeah, I'm going to take it in halftime too, Paul. But I'm trying to put some points up right here. Be aggressive, set the tone, be like, hey, listen, this is what you're going to get in the second half, so find something really quickly you can go to. So much for the tough field position. One play, and you're already to the 35. Wants to throw on first down off the play fake. Fires to the wide out. All kinds of room to throw that one in there. A huge gain on that one before he ran out of bounds, and he has the first down. Well, they wanted this guy catching the ball on the right side of the field. They could have just lined him up over there, but they didn't that time. He started off on the left side. He crossed the defense and made the catch on the right side of the field. So that big play changes the complexion of things. It's first and ten just outside the 30. Looking for a man. It's Aller. Receiver looks it in. It's complete. A timeout is called as this offense tries to find a way to get more points on the board before the half. I like the decision by the quarterback here. Just get the ball out of your hands, get it to your playmaker. A lot of times he'll dance and make even bigger plays than he did here, but it was still a positive game. Looking to pass on second down. Grabbed over the middle. It's Warren. Here's a timeout on the field. Tight game here late in the first half. Snap's going to come from the 23 on first and 10. He wants to throw, looking for the end zone. And he's got it! Touchdown, Nittany Lions! And I tell you what, that passing touchdown, man, that should spark this whole team. Like, the comeback is more than on now. Like, they got the touchdown, they cut into the lead. You, you want to get a stop and go into the half, get all the juices, all the excitement, and be like, listen, the passing game's rolling. We got this, the comeback's in full effect. to attempt the try. And with the extra point, they cut it to a 14-13 game. A very efficient five-play scoring drive. And they finish it off with a touchdown toss from the 23. Kickoff team is on the field. They'll try to drive this one deep. Looking for an alley from inside his own 10. Couldn't find a way to create that broken field as he stopped at the 25. Just a few seconds remaining here as they try to put something up before halftime. A little misdirection and the handoff on the counter. One step wrap, two step squeeze. This junior knows how to get him on the ground. That's the end of the second quarter. That means it's time to join Kevin in our halftime update. Thanks so much, guys. And I need not tell you... Rivalry games always bring out a ton of emotion. And no surprise, we saw just that in the first half today. Each of these two offenses has looked like well-oiled machines. But it doesn't take a genius to figure out these two passing attacks have run circles around these defenses. Man or zone, nothing seems to be working. And I'm not sure that defensive coordinator is going to be able to figure things out here at halftime. That said, let's get back to the field and our guys in the booth to see who comes out on top of this rivalry contest. Good job by the coverage unit to stop the return man. The Nittany Lions going back to work on offense now. Maybe adjustments or attitude or attitude adjustments. They've got to find a way to run the ball at least some here in the second half. I do think you said something that's important. I think running the football is an attitude. Like, it starts with the offensive lineman and being physical, having a nasty attitude, running back, same thing. I think they need more of that in the second half. 
You know, and I think if any of you are this defense, you have an opportunity to make a statement here. Yeah, I know you guys went in at halftime and you riled yourselves up and you told yourself that you think you can run the ball on us. On this very first drive, we're going to prove to you, just like in the first 30 minutes, you cannot. That may not look like a huge run, but they'll take it as it gets them up to the 24. And that play is essentially like a jet sweep, right? This offense is going to run the football conventionally. They'll do it between the tackles. They'll do it outside. But there's a lot of different creative ways they can get their playmakers the football in the running game. And I think that was an example of what you saw right there. Looking to throw. It's Aller. Gets it out quickly. They'll move those chains, getting it out to the 29-yard line and trying to get this drive rolling. Well, not down in distance. The quarterback's got to get rid of it so quickly, right? He knows the defense is going to be bearing down on him. So a nice job catching the gun snap and then turning and pivoting, getting it out of his hands quickly and accurately to pick up the first. To the air on first down. Unloads to the wideout. Catch in the middle. It's Saunders. And the explosive play, and they're on the move all the way to the 44. Man, if I'm a defense, I got to find a way to get some more pressure on the quarterback or disrupt their timing and their rhythm. I can't give them these big chunk plays through the air. I got to be maybe a little bit more aggressive or do something a little bit different. The Nittany Lions will hustle to the line. Off play action on first down. Throws to the wideout. He's got an open man. And he was loose and in the open field and on his way. A tremendous pickup on that one. And he had to go a long way to reel that ball. And he started off way on the right, crossed the entire defense, made the catch on the other side of the field. There's an example of how this offense can really attack every corner of the football field. The give from the gun. Fights his way ahead. They get him down after a pickup of three. They'll mark it at the 12. Operating in the red zone here on second down. Movement here from the tight end. Just feeds the running back. Keeps those legs churning for three yards. He's down at the nine. Really need to pick up this conversion and avoid having to settle for the field goal. Looking downfield, it's Aller. Fires into the end zone. Oh, picked off. A lot of quarterbacks have so much confidence that they can fit the ball in tight windows. How about the defensive player right here making an unbelievable interception, forcing the turnover, big play, big momentum swing. The pit offense back on the field and ready to roll. They're going to open this drive with a pass. Grabbed in the middle, it's Reynolds. They stop him just a link or two short of the first, and man, what they can do on second down here. When you're a defense, you have a choice. Do you play man or do you play zone? They sat back in zone. That might change. They might change their mind and try to switch to man here shortly in the future. Got some of the work done on first. Now let's see what they have on second down. He's looking to throw. Caught near the sticks, it's Lee. Brought to the ground, but not before getting enough for the first down. They've got a first and 10 at the 34. Looking to move it through the air. Grabbed behind the line, it's Hammond. At the 45 on his way. He's run out of bounds, but not before. Turning in a big pickup and moving the sticks for a first down. They've done a really good job identifying mismatches, and they find one out of the backfield there. 
Reese, I really don't think it's that hard. My guy is better than yours. Find the matchup across the field. Running back's got some speed. Get it in his hands quickly. Throw it to him fast. Let him make somebody miss against a slower guy that's usually a linebacker. The quick feet, the acceleration, the vision, and he works his way to the 44. Yeah, this coaching staff, they're getting this offensive line lathered up and into a rhythm. Now they're letting him drive off the ball on first down on these running plays, and they're getting chunks of yardage. Eight-yard pickup on first down leaves them with second and short. Looking downfield, it's Yarnell using the quick game. And they knock him down, but he got past the line to gain. Nice job by the running back catching the football and understanding where the first down marker was. I got to go get that first down. Did a nice job of it. Pittsburgh going to work with a fresh set of downs. Lost to throw on first down. Can't find his man as he took a shot trying to deliver that football, and it'll be second down. And screens are all about timing, right? You want to invite the defensive line to fly up the field, and then you want to throw it right over their head. And you could tell just a little bit off, and the defense got in there so quick, got the quarterback hit before he could really get his bearings and throw the screen. He'll try it again on second and ten. The short hands, it's Hammond. They make the stop, but this passing game does some damage, and they move the sticks with the first down. Well, it's a nice play design there. You're getting the running back involved in the pass game. Quarterback gives it to him early so he can go to work upfield and get the first down. All the way down to the 25-yard line, it's first and 10. Using his legs, it's Reed. What a nifty run there to pick up the first down. This defense really is on their heels. They've been on the field now for a long time on this drive, and they're just getting pushed around at the point of attack up front like we saw on that last play. Fans are bringing the noise on first and goal. They'll try to get it in with the run. He works his way all the way down to the three, and the defense is reeling. Now second and goal, and right in the teeth of this noise. Tries again to get it in. And he'll find the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh! Timely decisions, effective play management helps them get in the end zone after that marathon drive. And every time the offense needed to play, boom, they got it. I mean, you think about it. Whether it's a small run, small pass, whatever they needed, they got it done, and they popped it in for the score. Lining up for the PAT. And with the extra point, they push the lead out a little further. So it's an 80-yard drive and close the deal with a three-yard touchdown run. The kickoff team on the field as they'll send this one away. On the run from inside his own five. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes, and they'll stop him at the 16. Penn State sends the offense back onto the field. And boy, they missed an opportunity last time throwing that pick in the red zone, David. Yeah, and you got to put that frustration behind you. You can't turn it over. That's, that's a cardinal sin. No better than that, Jesse. You can't take points off the board. But you got to move on. I, you do. I, I think he just got way too overeager down in, in the red zone that last drive. So just come out here, trust your reads, trust what your coaches have told you to do, and just go out and execute the offense. To the ground. He's got it again. Defense not budging. He's still able to get two to the 29. And a lot of times you want those big plays. You want those splash plays. But sometimes you're going to take some losses. You're not going to run the football overly well. But if you continue to run it, you can at least create some balance. You at least have the threat of it. Otherwise, you're just going to abandon it. And now it's just going to be a passing game. Looking to throw. It's Aller. 
And he just threw that one away. Safe move, didn't see anything, lived to play another play. Ball's at the 29. Defense can taste getting off the field. It's third and long. From the gun, wants to pass. Makes the grab on the left. And they'll pick up the first down and mark it at the 47. And I love the awareness by the wide receiver on that play because I'm not sure that route was supposed to be that deep. You got to wonder if the receiver decided maybe to adjust the route a little bit to make sure that he got the first down. The Nittany Lions want to move quickly. Going up top on first down. A little screen to the running back. Shakes off the defender. They finally get him stopped, but what a good job by that front wall to set up the screen and create some lanes for their running back. As they get set to snap it, just about to reach the end of the quarter. Goes to the option. Quick toss. And there were no creases or crevices to run through, and they shove him out of bounds. Guys, that's the end of the quarter, and Pittsburgh has the lead. They've done the work to build a nice cushion. Now to bring it home as we check out the stats after three quarters. One more period to go to see who can make the winning plays and come home with the victory. After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. Receiver on the move gets the touch pass. And the defense stops him just short of the first down. Maybe needed a few more chain links to move the sticks. And listen, they didn't get the huge play off of that, but, but I love the ability to show that and be able to show plays off of that, that jet motion and just show them you're willing to complete it. But, you know, get those little chunks at a time. It doesn't have to always be a home run. That's still a successful play. To throw, it's Aller. He finds his man. That is exactly what you're looking for when you talk explosive plays. The defense finally able to make the stop. Well, offensively, they knew they were going to have some matchups they could take advantage of in this one. And all of a sudden, this quarterback has now over 300 yards passing in the game. Defensively, David, he has got them on their heels. And he's been showing you a little bit of everything. He can throw it all over the field to all different receivers, to his tight ends, to his running backs. Really has the ability to spread it around. And now over 300 yards. Still some time left, and he can put up even bigger numbers. And heck, go chase some awards, man. Get some postseason awards. Get an All-American. Just put up a day. Going to work in the red zone. They can't pick up the first down without getting it into the end zone. They'll go to the ground. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. When the offense gets in those multiple tight end looks, you kind of have a good understanding of what's coming. You don't know where the ball's going necessarily, but they'll put those big old bodies in there to block, to move people, to put more mass on the field, especially once you get in this red area where you have to be able to run the football effectively. Those passing windows tend to shrink a lot. Unloads quickly. And sure, tackling there to keep him from getting to the first down marker. That throw and catch, a really good example of why coaches don't want a quarterback to get stuck on a particular target, isn't it, David? Yep, that's exactly right. Find the guy who's open because you got so many guys that have so much speed that can do so much damage on the field. Find my matchup, get it to him, let him do the rest. Looking for the score! Reels it in in the end zone! Touchdown, Penn State! And the QB saw it right away. He knew it. As soon as he got that football, he got it out of his hands. He loved his matchup. Finding the big fella, getting a touchdown.
After the score, they need this two-point conversion to tie. Back to pass. It's Aller. Quickly complete. He's in the end zone. The two-point conversion is good, and we're tied here in the final period. Here comes the kickoff as we are all tied up in the fourth quarter. Just into the end zone, and he'll bring it out. Rolling the dice to bring it out of the end zone did not work out as he stopped at the 13. RPO complete to open the drive. Didn't pick up a lot there, moved it forward just a few. My old coach said, you'll never go broke taking a profit. Take what's there, take the positive yards, and never complain. Quarterback empties his backfield. Looking to throw on second down. Fires to the big fella. Put it right on him. Sweet play. Good pick up. And they'll move the chains with the first down. And that's why QBs love their tight ends so much, right? Especially when they're athletic, because they make short throws turn into long games. Because of his ability after the catch, it's so unique and special. He is dominant in this offense. They'll start this one from the 29 on first down. He's looking to throw it. Makes the grab. It's Lee. And he's knocked down immediately, but not before he moves the chains. He unleashed that one. Some serious spin rates and revolutions on that one. <laughs> Want to talk about velocity? How about the arm talent this kid has? I love watching him throw these curl routes. He's in rhythm. He takes his steps. And, man, when he decides to pull the trigger, watch out. Looking to go up top on first down. Got it in the middle, it's Reynolds. And he was fortunate not to lose yardage on that play, able to wedge it back to the line of scrimmage. In their vision of that play, someone would run free after making an easy catch. Uh, there was nowhere to run and nowhere to go except down. Probably looked really good when they threw that one up on the board this week in practice, but obviously a lot more difficult to go out and execute. Give the defense credit, great stop. And maybe he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. Yeah, nice job by the defense. That's what you're supposed to do. As soon as they catch the football, you want to limit that yards after the catch. He went nowhere after the catch. Nice job by the defense. Big third down as the crowd gets behind this defense. They're trying to slow that rush down with the draw. He got a bunch and looked close to getting a lot more, but he's got the first down. And I know this defense was expecting pass on that play, and they're worried about these receivers running down the field, but you've got to do a better job of being aware and locating the football, rallying to it, and getting that ball carrier down short of the sticks. The Panthers have it with a first and ten. He's going to pass. Got it in the middle. It's Mumpfield. They make the stop right there. Good pickup, but still short of the first down. And on the slant route, I love the location of the throw by the quarterback. He's not making it difficult on his receiver. He's putting the football out in front, hitting his receiver right in the face mask and making it easy for him. Offense about to reel off its seventh play of the drive. Running back goes in motion. To the air, it's Yarnell. It's complete to the left. They've got it inside the 30. They'll mark it at the 28. It's first down. And there was no question in that scenario. That's where the quarterback was going. He knew he had his receiver in a matchup that he liked, running a route where he would find himself open. Nice job between those two. They've got it inside the 30 at the 28. First down. The give to the back. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. I'll tell you, this defensive end, not only can he pass rush, but he can play the run as well. You see him beat the offensive lineman there trying to block him and get in the backfield to make that tackle for a loss. That was impressive. The negative play leaves him with second and 12. Motion trying to get the defense to show his hand. Caught in the backfield, it's Hammond. And he'll make his way out of bounds after the solid pickup. 
Guys have the backfield now. It's not just run the ball downhill anymore. You got to be versatile. I got to be able to trust you in the pass game. And I got to be able to throw you the football. And you can do that right there. I know you're going to catch it, and I can depend on you. Here comes this home crowd as the defense tries to get off the field on third down. They'll try to get it through the air. Caught in the backfield. It's Lee. He ended up losing yardage on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. Well, give the defense credit on that one because they knew coming into this one that they were going to try to get this receiver the ball in a variety of ways. They were ready for the screen there, and they created a negative play. So on fourth down, here comes the field goal kicker in a huge spot. And it's right down the boulevard. And now they take the lead. All field goals are not created equal, guys. Kicks in the fourth quarter to take the lead. They just seem to carry so much more weight. So give that young man credit for getting out there and knocking that thing through the uprights with all the pressure, with all the eyeballs on him. He delivered. They'll kick it away after putting up a field goal on that last drive. On the move from inside his five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. First down here with time for maybe one more play until the two-minute warning. Tip ball put it up for grabs, and I thought he had it, but somehow it slithered through his fingers. You know, the defense just hasn't seemed to quite have an answer. They've come close to interceptions like that one there, but they haven't registered any so far. They've given up a few touchdown passes. They're just not quite able to make the plays they need to against the pass in this game. Motion by the back forces the defense to adjust. Got him downfield. And he's running in the open. At the 20. He was working his way toward that goal line. They'll stop him at the two after the big play up top. And a touchdown here would not only give them the lead, but in the fourth quarter, that ramps up the pressure. They'll try to run it in. He's got it down to the one-yard line right on the doorstep of Pater. Defense going all in to stop the run. Off the play fake. Fires into the end zone. And swatted down by the defense to stop the scoring opportunity. Man, what a play by the defender. Thrown into the end zone, he swats it away. When a game's this close, this late, that's a play when we look back on this one that maybe helps win the game for this team. If they can get it into the end zone here, they can really turn up the heat in this one. Third and goal. Oh, and he dropped it. He had a touchdown right in his hands and couldn't hang on. It'll be fourth down. They took a shot into the end zone, trying to come away with a touchdown. Nice play by the defense. You're expecting them here to kick a field goal. I know there's time left in the game, but just tie this thing up and let your defense go to work. So here we are on fourth down, and this field goal kicker is going to face all the pressure in the world. Field goal is good. Just over a minute to play, guys. Still enough time for a finish here. That is a massive kick late here in the game to tie it up. And now, can your defense do their job and at minimum hold them scoreless here to put this thing into OT? Or even better, can they get you the football back and give you an opportunity to win the game? After that latest answer, tied things up. Just about set to kick it away again. He'll bring it out. It's Johnson. Not nearly as much as he'd hoped when he brought it out of the end zone. He'll be stopped at the 15. He wastes no time and comes out throwing. Wide open downfield. And he's down at the 41. That's a first down. Timeout on the field, and everybody want to make sure they're organized as we come down the gut of the game. 
Back to throw. It's Yarnell. Quick strike complete. And they wrap him up, but not before he gets enough on the catch for the first down. And a great job by the QB finding the running back, getting the football where he can do some damage after the catch, and most importantly, get the first down. Everybody has to be set. They have to get it off. He'll come out throwing on first down. Catch in the middle. It's Mumpfield. They'll immediately call timeout. This quarterback right now is in a groove, and he's doing a nice job in pre-snap. He's reading the coverage, and he's getting an idea of where he wants to go with the football. That's why the ball's coming out of his hands so quickly. That's why he seems like he's in a great... Gets away from one. Finds some space. Almost took it all the way there, but it's a huge gain, and they're set up with a first and goal. And the quarterback knew exactly where he wanted to go with the football, had time, spins the ball deep. Nice job by this offense, understanding what the defense has given them and creating the explosive play. And that big gainer on the last one has him ready to go from inside the 10. Quarterback touch pass on the jet sweep. A strong tackle and wrap up from the junior. Timeout called by the defense. It's their first of the half as they'll go to the sideline and try to make adjustments. Defense rolls up deep in its own end on that last play. Now a second and long coming. Touch pass on the jet sweep. Tripped up for the tackle. send out the kicker here from right in the center of the field straight on to win the game they'll get the timeout with five seconds remaining to play they'll try to put three on the board as the field goal unit comes on and this to put them on top as we get close to closing time no good after that failed field goal attempt fellas still tie ball game well, everybody in the stadium thought that was an automatic three. Not so fast. Bad miss by the kicker. The Nittany Lions going back to work on offense now. Okay, long way to go here. Are you content to play for overtime, David? And that's the question. Don't make the mistake here. You can be aggressive, Jesse, but you better be cautious. Yeah, I, I think taking a shot, I feel pretty good about it here. You know, give your guys an opportunity. Crazier things have happened. All right, guys, so here we go in overtime. And just to refresh everyone's memory, alternating possessions starting on the opponent's 25. And it's so nice to be on defense first, just to set the tone, to understand what you need. Try to hold them to a field goal. The offense knows they can do their job to go out and get a win. Just two possessions, Palmer. Like, you got to be at your best. Yeah, and I love the new rules, too, because in the third overtime possession, it goes to alternating two-point plays back and forth. Who's got anything left in the tank here in OT? Coming out on first down with the play fake. And this will be incomplete. A big hit there forces second down. Now, and that's your goal. Separate man from ball. Try to get your shoulder in there on the catch point and really make give him something to think about. Physically jar that football and knock it out. Nice job by the defender. After the incompletion, they're facing a second and 10 from the 25. Scanning the field. It's Yarnell. He's right on target. And the defense had that one well covered, just a short game there. They've done a really good job creating the matchups they want out of the slot. Yeah, dude, get that guy matched up on a linebacker. That guy matched up on a safety. Keep him away from the corners by putting him in the slot. Get him the football, let him make plays. On third and long, trying to have a big completion here. Makes the grab. Touchdown, Panthers. They jump on top here in OT. This game must be moving so slowly for this quarterback. He sees everything two or three beats ahead. 
way ahead. I mean, it's been, been really, really easy. I better get some more hits on him. I better do something to make him feel uncomfortable. Because right now, it's just like, oh, you're running that? Yeah, that's easy. I mean, he's, he's already read your mail. You, you better change the address, do something different. This extra point would give them a seven-point lead in OT. And the extra point is true, and they're on top by seven. They know what's in front of them. They have to answer that score with a touchdown. They're going to throw it to start the drive. Snagged in the middle. It's Singleton. Yeah, and you see running backs in today's football, they play wide receiver basically for you, but you got to find a guy that you can throw it to, and you know he's going to catch the ball consistently. Got the completion on the last play. Still some work to do on second down. Wide receiver now comes in motion. Touch pass on the jet sweep. Brought down to the ground, but he has enough for the first down. And just went with something very easy, very reliable. Flip it forward, let your receiver do the rest. I only got to get a few yards. Nice job, nice execution. First down. First and goal, down a touchdown. They have to get it in the end zone. On the run, it's Aller. And good coverage and better hands by the defender to knock it down in the end zone. Well, that last incompletion is a good example of why your timing has to be so good as a quarterback because the windows, they open and they close so quickly in this part of the field. Defense rolls up deep in its own end on that last play. Now a second and long coming. He's looking to throw. Pocket starts to collapse. He makes a grab. Oh, and he thought he might be able to wiggle his way into the end zone, but they knock him down at the three. Great job by the quarterback thrown against zone coverage. You cannot telegraph where you're throwing the football. You cannot eyeball wide receivers. So great job by the quarterback using his eyes, not staring down his guy, and then throwing them open. Looking to throw on third and goal. And that's incomplete. A defender all over him. Knocked the ball to the ground. Fourth down coming up. Third and short in college football today. You see so much more pass than you used to. The offense stays aggressive. And I think they stay aggressive because they know they're in field goal range. They got that three in their back pocket. Fourth and goal. And this is the ball game. The snap sets up the throw. Touchdown, Nittany Lions. They got the score now. Obviously very hard to complete passes this area of the field. Nice execution. Now you're down by one, and now you got to make the decision. Are we going to go for it and try to end the game right here and put this game in our offense's hands? What do you think? And that's why I love having the ball second, because I get the opportunity to do this. I knew they scored a touchdown. We scored a touchdown. Now, do I want to go for the win, or do I want to continue this game on? It's so nice to have the ball second. This is like that two-foot putt. They still need to make it to force another overtime. And that kick was perfectly down the middle. Here in the second overtime, they'll snap it on first down. Comes out throwing on first down. And it's incomplete. If you're going to take a hit like that, you might as well hang on to the ball. Line getting set on second down. They'll throw again after the incompletion. Caught over the middle. It's Warren. And this defense has its work cut out to get this dude on the ground. He was shedding serious tackles on his way to picking up the first. 
When you're dealing with the big tight end, you better get a bunch of hats around the football. And here's the thing, Reese. These used to be big, slow tight ends. Now these guys are absolute freaks. They're so good. You can split them out wide. You can put them in the formation. They can do so much. And you see after the catch, hard to get to the ground. Works his way to the four-yard line, and they'll have it first and goal. Sometimes you'll hear guys derisively say, well, he just piles up numbers. When the number gets close to 450, that's worth doing. And that's why they throw it as much as they do, because they've got a difference maker playing the quarterback position. He gives them a chance to be explosive and light up the score. Here. Touchdown, Penn State! That score gives them the lead here in the second overtime. He has been surgical. Precision passes, using the scaffold, the fine instrument, rather than the blunt one. And the defense has had absolutely no answer for him. Just, uh, he's been down their throats all game long, a step ahead, understanding what he's seeing, and just destroying this defense. Now in the second overtime, you must go for the two-point conversion. Wide out in motion. On the move. They do not get the two, and now the lead sits at six in double OT. Now on first down, they need to answer with a touchdown. To the air, it's Yarnell. Makes the grab over the middle. There to make the tackle, but the big throw is good enough to give them a first down. Well, it's a great design on offense on that pass play there. You see they clear out the middle of the field. They leave a huge space wide open for the quarterback to attack. Nice timing on the throw. Now the crowd responding in the red zone, trying to help this defense. Trying to find his man on first down. Got it behind the line. It's Hammond. And that defense pushing him out of bounds after a short game. I want to get my running backs the ball in space as much as possible. And sometimes it doesn't work in the running game. But I can throw it to him. I can try to create some space out wide, dump him the football, let him make some catches, and see if I can't get some big plays out. On second down, just keeps firing. Pass rush, gets there, gets home, gets him down at the 23. Just a great job defensively, making him go through his progressions, and he really didn't have time to do it. And that's exactly what you do in zone coverage. You drop in your spots, you read the quarterback's eyes, make sure you take away that quick stuff, and a great job rushing the passer and getting the sack. Third down in overtime, they have to keep the drive alive and try to get it in the house. On third and long, you'll have to turn it loose deep. Shoots it to the left. Complete downfield. And he's not going to make it. The defense denying him the first down. Right there, I think you need a better play call. you got to help your quarterback out a little bit because the throw has got to at least make it to the sticks. On that last play, you're basically trusting the guy to make a few dudes miss in order to go pick up that first down. I think you need to start being a bit more aggressive here when these third downs present themselves. Touchdown, Panthers! And the answer here in overtime. Second overtime, you have to go for two, and this is for the win. Dropping back, it's Yarnell. He got it! The two-pointer for the win, and they take the game in double overtime.